In today's video, I'm going to take a look at an old analog meter. This came out of a cassette deck. I'm going to try to figure out the full scale current and I'm going to try to figure out the internal resistance. Now, sometimes these meters might have printing on them, says the current, but this one not. Also, on the left here, there's a little plus sign, so this meter has polarity. Um, if there would, there would be no plus sign or minus sign on there, you could also just figure it out with an ohmmeter. If you touch real quickly here across the pins with the ohmmeter, and then that'll make the pointer move in one direction or another, then you know which direction is correct. But you can only do that for a second, or rather part of a second. So there's one more thing I can point out. Sometimes these meters have resistors in series or in parallel. But looking at this one, I don't I don't actually think it does. What I could do is I could unsolder this and then just pull it apart and take a quick look. Now I attempted to take this apart further. I um soldered the wires from the back and I thought I was gonna be able to push this thing out through the front, but then I noticed okay. Here on the left, there's a little metal piece here, which evidently is, looks like it's glued in there. And I don't think I'm going to go ahead and mess with that. I was just checking to see if there was a resistor in here somehow, but I don't think there actually, I don't think there actually is. So before I tear things up for no reason whatsoever, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, back together again. It was a couple minutes of unnecessary labor I guess. I need a couple things to figure out the full scale current. Of course this VU meter, I've changed the wires now. Now I got red to plus and black to minus. I need a 10k potentiometer so I can bring the basically the meter up to full scale. And here the Red here, that's where I'm going to be feeding in the DC voltage into the wiper here. The wiper is the movable part, and, and it's going to be coming out the other end here. Of course, I need the ammeter function of my trusty fluke multimeter, and I need a 1.5 volt DC source, which I'm going to be using my power supply. Back in the day, this was done, the 1.5 volt DC source was a battery. And I'm going to need various different uh, connectors and wires it look like wires it looks like. Now the first thing I'm going to do is bring my power supply up to 1.5 volts DC and I'm going to check that with my meter here. I don't trust the scale reading on the power supply and I want 1.5 volts. I'm wow. I'm really pretty close. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now here we can see the output from the power supply and, we, and I've got everything connected and you can see the pointer here is already two thirds of the way over and I've got the resistance of the 10,000 ohm potentiometer that I'm using as high as possible. You have to start out with as high as possible because you don't want it down to one ohm or something like that because you don't want the, the you don't want such a high current flowing through the meter. You don't want to destroy it. And you don't want the needle pegging all the way over here. So that's why I, I use 10,000. Um, so I could have really used more than 10,000 ohms. I could have used maybe a 25K, 50K, or 100K uh, potentiometer. But it is what it is. I've got everything hooked up. Now let me go ahead and explain my hookup quick. So let me go ahead and explain my hook up here. I just had to change something around. I think I didn't have it hooked up the way I wanted. Now, from my power supply, which is this alligator clip here, goes to the, I already lost contact here, goes to the ammeter here of my multimeter. And of course the current goes through that. And then, over here, this is the other end of my multimeter. It goes to the wiper of the potentiometer, out of the wiper, to the positive side of the meter, 
then goes through there comes out and then it goes back to the power supply right there and I'm just gonna go ahead and measure the current directly let me just get the meter I think it's in the AC function let me just put it to DC so so as I mentioned earlier I want to know the full scale current or the full scale deflection current so what I'm going to do is use the potentiometer turn down the resistance of the potentiometer until the pointer here goes up to plus five and that's full scale so let me go ahead and do that where's that thing at okay over here I'm going to try to do this from the side here and we can see things going up here I'm looking at it like from the wrong angle I really can't see here but this is just for demonstration purposes anyway so I think I can go a little bit a tad a tiny bit higher well it looks to be pretty close from behind the camera let, let me go ahead and take a reading here and we can see here we have 200 and oh no I've got a battery problem well it was 279 microamperes around there let me go ahead and see if they shut this off maybe the battery will still last long enough to do this all again shut everything off put it in the ammeter function again turn everything on DC so 279 microamperes so that's going to be the full scale current and again it's really important to start out with the potentiometer all basically turned all the way up for maximum resistance and also as I mentioned I could have started out or rather I should have started out with the higher value potentiometer but I just grabbed what I had at hand so that's that and it's uh, working out now I hooked up the voltmeter direct across the pins of the meter I bought myself a little uh, Chinese voltmeter not too long ago and we can see here it's reading 181 basically millivolts DC so I already know the current and what I could do is uh, figure out the resistance as I mentioned I want to know the resistance of this the internal resistance of the meter I could just use Ohm's law and using the equation R equals E over I so I could um, divide 0.181 volts by the 200 and I think it's 279 microamperes so I could go ahead and let me go ahead and do that and write that down so I did the math and I got 649 ohms I took the voltage across the meter which is 0.181 volts DC and the current is 279 microamperes so that would be 0 0.000279 and if I wanted to I could get even more accurate by using another digit here but it's good enough um, and I came out with 649 ohms rather they were 648.7 or something like that I just rounded up to 649 ohms basically so that would be one way of doing that now I'm going to go ahead and measure the resistance or try to measure the resistance directly with my meter back in the day you couldn't do it like this because you'd have to be if you use the old analog meters you'd have to be afraid that you might burn out the meter movement but we'll go ahead and, and try this method uh, first here I'm going to be measuring the resistance across the meter directly and keeping a real close eye on the pointer make sure it does not peg out 
Now I've got the multimeter set up to measure ohms and I'm going to measure the resistance of the meter here directly back in the day. You couldn't do it this way because you were afraid the meter here, the meter coil was going to burn out. So I'm hoping here that the needle doesn't peg and that the reading we get is going to be close to my calculation. So let me keep an eye on that on that pointer there and make sure it's okay so now okay the, it has not the pointer has not pegged out and I'm reading 650 ohms so basically that's the internal resistance of the meter now there used to be another way of doing this you could take a another potentiometer and of course turn that up to the highest resistance too then put it across connected across the terminals here and then once the meter was at half scale then you basically have the uh, resistance but since you're introducing a foreign element like an extra an extra resistor basically an extra potentiometer into the circuit I mean that's not going to be um, 100% accurate there. In fact, if I were, I think if I were to hook everything up again, and if I were to do, put the meter in the ammeter function, once I put that potentiometer across the two leads here, I would see the current here, excuse me, the current here on the meter, that would go up, basically. So, it would be falsified a little bit, so but the way I used here, that seemed to be working okay. I'm just doing this basically in case I need this meter for a project. I've got two of them. So uh, I can write down on there, you know, the full scale current and the internal resistance in case I use it for something. Now, if you want to use these meters for something, I think there's plenty of information on the internet order or in books. So I hope this wasn't too boring and it didn't take too long. Thanks for watching.